What's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. You already know what time it is. We've got a fantastic guest this morning. I'm starting off. I'm fired up. I'm inspired before I get inspired here on the show um, because I know I'm about to be inspired. Uh, for those of you who are brand new, put your seatbelt on. You're in for a wild ride today and in the future. This is a defining moment and potentially uh, the opportunity to have a major crossroads in your life uh, if you take extraordinary action and follow that up with extraordinary consistency, which is exactly what our guest this morning has done. Uh, she is a former substance abuse counselor, somebody who uh, you know, is a, a massive action taker. Um, she was successful in her previous career. Uh, she has a family. She's a wife. She's a mother. Uh, she is now a successful digital marketer. Uh, and when I say successful, I mean extraordinarily successful. Uh, her results are not the average results. Uh, her results are the extraordinary. They're the exception, not the rule. Uh, her results are what is possible. Uh, but what you're going to see here in just a few moments and over the next hour is she really is, despite her results, just a normal person. Now, notice I didn't say an average person. I said a normal person. Um, she, if you cut her, now I haven't cut her or seen her bleed, but I would assume she bleeds red just like the rest of us, um, gets belly aches, you know, all of the same likes coffee. I can see her backstage drinking some right now, just as I am. Um, uh, you'll see some of her content and videos laughing at herself, that she's somewhat feral, that she's somewhat wild, that she loves to be herself, goof around and have a great time. And she loves to be at home with her family. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, she just got back or is currently on a trip right now uh, skiing. And so, um, you know, you are going to hear about some of the things that are possible today. Uh, she's had, like I said, extraordinary success. Uh, it's not what the average person experiences. And, and I will say that the average person uh, does not take nearly the action or have nearly the savvy that she has. Sometimes we have certain strengths and you have to work on your weaknesses. She certainly has certain strengths, but we're going to hear about her weaknesses and some of the things that you may not have known if you were to just follow her or come across her online that she's had to push through in order to have the success that she's had. And so with that being said, please, everybody help me welcome Caroline. Hene, what's up? What's up? Thanks for the introduction. Good to see you again. Good to see you as well. And your audio and video is coming through. It is? Okay, good. We might overlap. It's been a little weird on my end, but we'll see. No, Fingers it's crossed. It's perfect. Okay. Well, my friend, here we are. We meet again. Good How are you. you? I know. I'm good. We did just get back from a ski trip. We had like, it was a nightmare getting home. We were at the airport for nine hours uh, with the, the baby and the four-year-old. It was wild. It was a wild day, but it was funny. My, uh, server at the restaurant was someone that followed me so we got talking and stuff and she was super cool and i ran into actually a few other people so it was a fun uh fun super fun trip but that draw oh, that journey home man i'm like no place is too far to drive <laughs> yeah so isn't that interesting that you had people recognize you whether it be in the airport or restaurants i had the same thing i was in vegas a week ago i think we talked while i yeah. was there and I had a guy, I was at a, a really nice restaurant having a really wonderful meal. And um, I can't remember whether my server or another server came up or the guy came over and was like, hey, I've waited to come over and say hi. I didn't want to come over and bother you, which I can remember doing when I was like young with like I saw Hulk Hogan at a um, at a at a hibachi restaurant one time. And it was like, we waited until he was done with his meal. You know what I mean? To like go over and send the same thing. And I was like, little old me, you know, so it never, it never gets normal um, for me anyways. What was that like for you to have people recognize you? What was that like to have your family there? It's always really weird. It's, it's happened a few times. And um, 
it's always just strange because I'm like, I'm nobody, you know? So for have, to have someone to say that, and it makes you think more of like, I don't know, like people anywhere could recognize you. And we are like, you know, in the trenches. I'm like getting like, you know, the kids in order. There's like freaking food all over the floor. I'm like, can I have another drink? And, and then she tells me at the end, she's like, I follow you. And I was like, oh, oh I'm not normally like this. <laughs> And, um, but she was, uh, she was super cool and, uh, we, we got to talking and everything. And like I said, it's happened a few times, but every time it's just like, oh my gosh, like, it's so weird. And, um, I don't know. I'm like always the person that to kind of like shit on myself to make someone else feel like a little more normal, because I think you have this idea of someone else on the online space on social media and you think they're like unapproachable or like whatever. And I'm just like, you said, I'm just a normal Average, nah, a little bit on average, but I'm just like a normal person, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like well, I was just, we're both a little average, but we, we, that's part of the tagline here is F average be legendary. So I don't like to use that word as much, but yeah, no, yeah. I like to actually live a normal life and average life as much as possible. I just don't like to get average results. So when it right. comes time to things that I'm passionate about, like, supporting my family, like making a living that I'm willing to put in extraordinary work to make that happen. And so if people were to look at you, they would think that, you know, it's, it's just easy for you. It's come naturally. A lot of people probably haven't believed your results. So let's talk a little bit about what it was like for you to get started just for, you know, it's been a while since you've been on the show. Um, so let's kind of go back from the beginning and talk about like what it was like for you to actually get started. And I want to cover some of the things that you had to overcome for those who wouldn't normally get a sit down conversation with you to, to, to get some of these answers to find out what your journey has really been like. So take us back to the beginning. What, what were you looking for? I mean, why were you even open to something in the first place? Right. Yeah. So I, uh, <clears throat> I guess the, idea was planted up here um, a little while ago. Uh, I was working late nights at a bar and I had just had, I was like maybe eight months postpartum with my first son, which was like at the height of COVID, he was born. Um, so I had just gotten back to work and I was loving it because I had that like adult interaction for a while. And then I was just like, oh my God, this is crazy. Like I started as a server, moved to the bar. And it was uh, Miller's Ale House. So that place closes, you know, late. So then you're cleaning up and everything. It's just like, man. And when you have a little kid, like, you're not getting to sleep in. Like, half my co-workers, co co-workers would sleep until noon and then wake up at, you know, whatever. or And then start work at whatever. And then it was just like, that was their life. And me, on the other hand, was, like, working until 2 and then getting up at, like, 7 with the baby and then like doing everything in life and then getting back to it. And my friend that worked there, she was a mom too. Our kids are two weeks apart. And I just remember like vividly having a conversation with her and being like, is this it? Like, this is it. This is it for the rest of our lives. Like, this is crazy. And then I was in school already, but I finished my, I was working on finishing my uh, master's degree. So I ended up taking like an internship job um, at the place where I worked as a substance use and mental health counselor um doing an inner or doing my um whatever like my hours there clinical hours and then they ended up offering me a job so i left the restaurant and i was like all right this is it this it wasn't the restaurant job but this is it like this is my big girl job this is my career like oh and i did love it like it was good fulfilling work but so emotionally draining you know so like, every night i'd be coming home just like too overstimulated like taking my son out from daycare and i was just like bro this is wild like I'm burnt out, you know, and like this is supposed to be my job for the next however many years. So, and then eventually, you know, pregnant with Caden. And when I had Luke, I had some pretty bad like postpartum anxiety and depression. And um, the idea of putting my, you know, expected baby in daycare really like freaked me out. So I was like, I wonder if there's a way that I can work from home. And that's kind of like the whole backstory of it. But that was the, the moment where I decided like, I bet there are ways. So then I started, you know, searching for it and then the algorithms and, you know, your phone does what it does. And, um, and Walcott landed right in my Facebook feed. And, um, that was kind of like the start of it. Um, I saw her video, it's curious, but kind of like, you know, I don't really, it doesn't really add up. Like there's no way, you know, you're making this kind of money online. Um, 
but I watch the whole thing through and the algorithm has a thing with that too. So if you watch that whole video and they're going to show you more videos like that because clearly you spent some time on it. So that's what happened. Um, I was like a lot of people with the internet and social media hesitant to click on any links. Like I don't want to get freaking, you know, spammed, whatever. So it took me a while to like respond to her call to action. Um, but once I did, and then it was taken to, you know, your page and everything. And I watched that, I think it's like a 20 minute video. Right. Um, and I just remember it was like midnight and I was on the couch watching this video and I was just like, I have like chills, like thinking about it. I literally had, like, oh, uh, I'm such an empath though. I'd be getting feelings about everything. But I was just like, this is crazy. Like I really like connected with you and your story and you felt so like real and um, and just the opportunity. So I was just like, well, okay, like maybe this is what I was looking for. But even still, I didn't jump on it for a little while until I did. And then, um, yeah. It, and then you go through that whole battle of like self-reflection and, um, all the limiting beliefs, all of the discrediting yourself and your abilities and like, who am I? And like all those things. And then that's another roadblock that pops up. And then I think that's like the pivotal moment for people. Like you either say you let those thoughts win and you go down that path of like, yeah, it's not for me. The good for them, but like, it's not for me. Or you say like, why not me? Like, why not give this a shot? Like if she can do it, I can do it. It sounds so cliche, but I was watching her videos and like, it's like, I can do that. Like maybe I can do it better. You know, like, like she's her and like, I'm me. And like, maybe if I really took this seriously, like I could go far with it. So yeah. that was kind of, yeah, like the, the pivotal point, but I'm very like, I'm all in or I'm all out. So I'm like, all right, if I'm going to put myself out here on social media for potential friends, family to see, not like I did, I posted to my personal accounts, but that's the internet. You know, I was like, if I'm going to do it, they're going to be damn good videos. Like, I'm not going to like come out here with some shitty videos and like hope for the best. And then I'm like, you know, the laughing stock of my town. Like if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it good. Obviously did not start off that way. Uh, but that was my mentality going into it. My first few videos are definitely like real weird. Um, but it's, it's a business. It's a learning thing. Like, just like if you were to start at a new job, like you're going to have a period where you're, you know, you're in the, um, whatever phase where you're learning all the new things and you're in the, what's it called? Like the, that the first like, phase. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Know. Like you're learning all the things you're, yeah. you're the, oh, there's a word for it, but like, it's the same sort of thing. You know, like you have this time where you're learning a new business, a new skill. Social media is a skill, like the editing portion, like, understanding so many things about it and it's just like it's just weird how much i know about it now after not being on social media prior to this mm. um like very like sparingly on social media so um it was a huge learning curve and then it's like a you know it shakes your confidence and like you know you post a video and like it's crickets and no one's you know engaging with it and no one's following you and you're just like okay hey, like, hi it's just me and me like i like this video like it's okay and then is it really that bad and should i take it down and then you go back into this whole cycle of like what am i doing here and it's literally like it is such a mind game like that is the biggest piece of this it's like convincing yourself that you can do it before you actually do it and then just going on that belief that like i can do this i can do this i'm going to keep showing up remembering your why and um it was a lot you know it's yeah. crazy to get back on because here i am now but those beginning stages were hard. You know, mm -hmm. it was a, a mental battle over everything else. And like someone's pregnant, finishing my thesis, working full time, toddler, still a wife, house to keep up. Like my dad was dying with dementia. Like there was a lot going on. And like I say, I share this in my story, but people, I think like, you know, it's either like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Or like, maybe that's not real. But like, that was what was going on in my life. Like I had every reason not to do this. I had every mm -hmm. excuse in the book to quit. You know, it's crazy that I even took it on anyway. But yeah. like to take it on and, and to have the success that I've had, is just like, it's just, I mean, I'm sure you hear it all the time. It's life-changing, you know, like aside from the money, like just the experience, the confidence, everything that I've gained from literally doing this course. Like I remember seeing my my other Wake Up Legendary, like if you did this course and did nothing with it, you're gonna be better off because of it. Just because you have like the 
that just that tap into the online world and like what is actually out there. And then you make a conscious decision for yourself. Am I going to pursue this or am I going to knowingly know that this is an option for me, but I'm not going to do it anyway. And I think that like weird dissonance is like strange for a lot of people because they have to sit with that. And then it's kind of like sitting there ruminating. Like I met someone at the last mastermind that uh, she's like, I watched your videos for six months. I've been watching you since um, when you were pregnant. And there she was at the mastermind, like finally launched her business. So mm. it's just like one of those, I get it. it Cause it is, it's a trip. It's a mind game over everything, but um, it's so worth it. Mm. So worth Beautiful. It. Beautiful. So, so much there to unpack and so well said uh, you, you're talking like a true expert. You're tra talking like somebody who's thoroughly experienced in this and comfortable with it and narrating your journey, articulating it so clearly. And, um, it's, it's amazing because you were brand new to my knowledge. You had never done any form of digital marketing or internet marketing or entrepreneurship or business ownership ever before. Is that right? Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, think about that, friends. I mean, most internet marketing launches, communities, you see somebody launching a course, which is kind of what I grew up with in this industry with somebody, some big guru would launch a course. And then all these, he would, he or she would get affiliates involved and they would promote the course. And it was like a band of 10 to 20, like super affiliates who had been doing it for five, 10 years. And, you know, it was just this big kind of promotion onto this particular course. And then of course the, the, you know, it would end, it was like a week or two long promotion and there would be like this huge surge of millions of dollars in sales. And then everybody would go back to doing what they were doing until it was time to promote the next guru's course. And there it, very rarely did you see organic stories of success with people who had never had success before, you know, and that's why I think a lot of the internet marketing courses and kind of communities and gurus and things kind of have a bad rap because it's like, well, what is the average user experience? You know, well, it's not so good when, you know, people are really experienced, but they're kind of pretending like they're not and like anybody can do it. And what's amazing about this community and about what we're doing is that there's so many, you included, who have had extraordinary success. You're a documented multimillionaire. And that's a, not a guarantee of income, friends. And that's not the average result of what you should expect. The average result is nothing, right? And that's what most people get because, well, they do nothing because of all the things that you just said that are hard to overcome. But you're laying out what you had to go through in order to achieve those results and it both inspires me and I think everybody else, 700, almost 800 people watching this live right now and thousands more who will watch this later, right? Um, that, 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 you, that this is possible. There's no kind of, um, there's no hidden background. You don't have hidden experience that, you, I mean, you came in this brand new and that alone is powerful, not to mention all of the things that you had standing in your way in terms of, as you mentioned, your dad being pregnant, um, skepticism. So let's talk about, let's break down a little bit more and tease apart some of these things that you overcame. So you talked about when, you know, this kind of battle, when you started to post at the beginning of kind of like that you know, that slippery spiral that you go into when you post and then you're checking it for the next couple of hours or even 24 hours. And it's like no likes. The only name up there on the like is yours, you know, and you don't know whether to unlike it because you don't want to be the only one to like it. There's no views. How did you keep going through that phase when nobody was listening? So I think that this is like, like in hindsight, this is what I think was so important in the beginning. And if you guys are just getting started with this, hear this. You have to stay in your own lane. I didn't know of anybody else that was in this business at all. Like obviously in person, but like even following wise, like I literally saw M. Walcott's videos and she was like the only person that I followed. 
Um, and I eventually would follow more people to try and get them to follow me and like figure out how that whole thing worked. But I was not comparing myself to other people's success. And I think that we get so caught up. Like I have a you know mentorship group where there's a lot of like back and forth of, you know, like same stuff, limiting beliefs and everything. But like everyone is comparing themselves to someone else. And I know that's really, really hard just in life in general and especially on the online space and, you know, where you can see proof of things and you're like, why not me? But I think that gets in your head more than you realize. And that can be what stops you. But I didn't have anyone in my lane. It was just me. So that first like TikTok video, because that's where I started, I posted it literally just to like test out how the recording worked and like the filters and songs and like putting the little like text on screen. And I was like, should I post it? I'm like, yeah, 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 I post it. And then I came back to it like, I don't know, like a week later and it had like 600 views or something. And I was like, I go, who is watching my video? I didn't follow anyone. No one was following me. It was just like a tester video. And I was like, okay, like who? Cool. But TikTok's like that. They're, they're kind of shady like that where they, your first few videos do really, really well. And then you're like, okay. And then it kind of like starts to trickle off. So that definitely happened. Um, but yeah, it's it's definitely a weird a weird thing in the beginning when it's just kind of like you and you. And I remember when I made my like Facebook group, my um, you know, like the free group that like you know you can make as a community. And it was like, yeah. hey, like me uh, and like two other people, like you know, because it starts off like that. Everyone oh, yeah. starts off like that. You don't yes. start with a bunch of followers and a bunch of confidence. Yeah. But the point is like you do start and you keep going because it's not like a quick thing. And I think that's another thing Like people see my success and they expect it right out the gate. And even friends that I know in, in real life have started this and kind of like expected the same results. And it's weird for me because this was my story, you know, and this is how it went for me. And I, I can pick apart reasons on why I think it went as well as it did, but this was my like average experience. But I understand that like it's not everybody's like you're saying it's not most people's experience. But I think there's a huge piece of it that is, you know, your own drive, your own tenacity, your personality, your perseverance, your confidence as you go. I was also in therapy like this was like they like this was a transformation from the inside out. Like mm. y'all don't even know. So mm. I think that there's a lot of pieces to it um, that are like unseen that maybe are like, you know, parts to my, are, are parts to my success, but it's yeah. not to say that people can't have the same, you know, I'm just one of many stories. Um, but it's not like I had it easy or I yeah. had the experience or whatever. I shouldn't have made the amount of money that I've made like on paper, yeah. you know? Yeah, for sure. No, I no totally. And you never know when your number is going to get called in entrepreneurship, you know, so you kind of got to show up every day, every month, every year. And mm -hmm. some years are going to be great. And maybe that's going to be your first year. Maybe that's going to be your fifth year. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to be your 10th year, right? You really don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people who had horrible first, second, third years, and then suddenly blew up because, you know, they were adding people into their Facebook group. Nobody was really paying attention, you know, and then all of a sudden there was 10,000 people in the group and then people, you know, saw posts and then went into the group and saw there was 10,000 other people were like, whoa, this place is happening. This is the party yeah. to be at. Right. And it was like, well, yeah, I've been here all along building this, but you just kind of noticed. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. And like, that's how it happens. And I'll be telling people that like, do not give up. Like you don't know. Cause all it takes is like one, you know, like one video that does really well to like, kind of like put you on the map and not like it, it has to now go that way. Like that. Yeah. But like, that's what happened for, for me with uh, TikTok. I, I gained 170,000 followers in my first two months on TikTok. And I, I have a new account now. I don't even have that many followers. So like, but I had some, you know, crazy viral video and like, that's all it takes to kind of put you on the map and kind of get some eyes on your stuff. And I'll be telling people this all the time. And it's so, it's a weird thing to say. And maybe you, hopefully you understand it the way that like, I understand it when I say it and the way I mean it, like it is literally within you to go out and make this video. That sounds like obviously, right. But like whatever is up here in your head, like the idea that eventually like you can put out, it's within you already. So you have the possibility, you have the capabilities of 
putting out a video that does really, really well, that goes viral, that puts you on the map, that gains you all these followers, all these uh, eyes on your links and your offerings and your emails. And then is when like the real marketing starts because in the beginning, like we're just trying to get someone to like pay attention to us. Like, Hey, I'm posting videos. I'm really trying over here. But then yeah. it becomes like, you know, you're nurturing your audience and you're building your brand and like, you know, you're getting like meaningful leads. You're not just posting just to post like you, that's when like the marketing side comes in and it's kind of good because in this interim between getting that vid video that takes off and actually marketing, you're learning, Oh, you should be learning in that middle ground, right? Like I never stopped. And I think that's another piece to this. People will either, you know, take the course and kind of stop there or, you know, their things are slow. So like they get slow, but like, you gotta be hungry for this. Like I was still on YouTube. I was still on Google. I was soaking up every single piece of information, reading books, listening to podcasts. I was like, I did a lot because I wanted it. I was so hungry for it and I'd never stopped learning and I'm still that way. And um, I think that when you submerse yourself into um, a community like this uh, with the people with like-minded mindsets and goals and ideas, the people that have the capacity to think bigger, that's where you need to be. That's where you need to go. Like, cause there's so much, there's already like the limiting beliefs back here. You don't need any negativity like around you whatsoever. You need the positivity. You need to look to those people that you want to learn from and keep learning. And that is how you stay entrenched in all of this and stay like at your core, knowing that like, this is for me. And like you get fired up learning all this stuff and seeing, you know, stories and, um, and everything. It's just, it's a whole it's a whole shift in mindset and, you know, action and everything. Not to say that you're ditching your old life behind, but like you might need to like lay off the Netflix or whatever and start binging shit for your future. The important stuff that actually matters here, you know? And from hearing you make the comment a moment ago about you were also in therapy, which is something that you didn't mention before on top of going through whatever the, the loss and tragedy with your dad, um, you know, the being pregnant, the job shock of not enough money, even though you thought you were finally at your kind of dream career that you was your big girl job. All of those things were happening, which can either create breakdown or breakthrough. There's no doubt. Life alone can create breakdown or breakthrough. However, without a pretty decent amount of, of um, work and support, it's probably going to create a breakdown versus a breakthrough. That's what it does for most people, right? Mm -hmm. Is those type of things break us down. For you though, not only were you open and learning and pursuing and experiencing this huge intake of information about these new strategies and skills for online, you were also going to therapy. So you were also growing personally. And I'm starting to get an idea of what you mean when you say kind of totally merging. You have to be obsessed with sort of what I heard you say a moment ago. It, 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 tr it will pay you like a hobby if you treat it like a hobby, right? Is that sort of what you're saying? Yeah, 100%. Like, I don't know, because I'm very, I'm all in or I'm all out. I'm kind of like black and white. Yeah, you stuff, you know? that. Right, so if I'm going for it, that means I'm going for it. Like, watch out, because I'm, I'm coming. Mom was coming, and I'm going to do like a whole, it's going to be a, it has to be. Yeah. It's going to be worth my time. Like I just said everything I had going on. There's right. no way I'm trying to make like freaking pennies with this. There's no, I'm not interested in that. I wouldn't bother. Why waste my time if I'm not going to do it big? Because you're not going to get big results. And like, that is like, I don't know. I knew I had a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff going on. I just wrote a 73 page thesis on like mental health stuff. And I'm like, I can't write this, research this for months on end and not be applying this to myself. So yeah, I was in my own therapy, working through a lot of stuff, still aiming therapy, you know? And I, it's just like, it's a lifelong as well, by the way. process. Good, I think everyone should be. Yeah, I know. You know, I mean, and why wouldn't you be? It's like, if, if, you're, if you really want personal change, and I love this topic of being all in, if you're really 
about personal development, which is such a buzzword and it's such an overused word. We think because we listen to a business podcast or or audiobook every once in a while, we're in personal development, or because we're sharing memes on Facebook about dropping toxic people in our life, we're in personal development. Personal development is so much more than that. I mean, if you don't feel some, I mean, if you don't feel really challenged, if you don't feel like you're about to have a breakthrough because you're pushing yourself to do uncomfortable stuff, then you're not personally developing. You're not growing. You know, it's not a, and that's, I think the, there's avoidance in a, in, in a, along with avoidance comes escape where we sort of escape to social media and we kind of scroll and post certain things to kind of make us feel like we're personally developing. But the truth is we're not doing any of the hard work, which usually happens behind the scenes and nobody sees it, right? If you're really developing, you're doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes that nobody sees and the stuff that you do put out is kind of courageous stuff that makes you really feel uncomfortable to put out because there's an element of vulnerability there and there's an element of courage that most people are not willing to do. And when you begin to take those certain steps, you are going to get mocked, laughed at. People are not going to understand. It is going to make if it makes you uncomfortable, it's absolutely going to make others uncomfortable. So that becomes a new barrier for you to push through if you want to continue your journey of personal development and true growth, because now all of a sudden your growth is going to be challenging other people's belief about what is possible for them and why they're not doing more, right? So you may even begin to get little snide comments, criticism, um, you know, certain energy from old friends, family members, because now all of a sudden you're kind of pursuing something that is actually good for you, right? Mm -hmm. And the old crabs in a bucket kicks in, which is when you start to try to climb out of that bucket of mediocrity, people will try to pull you back in, not physically, but just with little comments, just by not being supportive, by being silent rather than encouraging. Right. And so as I say this, you're kind of smiling a little bit. You obviously There's just like so much truth. There's just so much truth to everything that you're saying. And it's like the people that want to like pull you back in to their little like, you know, like whatever party they're they're that those are the people that aren't looking in the same direction as you. They're like, stay on here where we are. Cause when you step outside of the, the typical mold of people, when you start to do things that are above average, it makes people uncomfortable because they don't have the balls to do it themselves. They're like, can you stay down here with us? Because like, it's a little weird. We don't, we don't know what you're doing up there. It makes me uncomfortable for you to go out and do something that I was, I'm too scared to do. There's like that quote that's like a, a, a millionaire would never uh, laugh at you for starting a business. An NBA player would never laugh at you for playing ball. Like the people that have been in your shoes and done it themselves, those are the people that you need to be looking at. Those are the people that, and that's what I was saying, like who you surround yourself with. And I know that's hard. Like, thankfully, I've had a very supportive family, husband, friends, everything. But they were definitely the people that laughed at me. And there's that other quote that's like, you know, first they'll laugh at you, then they'll ask you how you did it. And you don't know how many people from my hometown are like, hey, girl, we did the work at Chili's in like 2015. Do uh, you want to get together? And I'm like, oh, really? Do you? <laughs> you know, and it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's weird. It is weird. And I'm not saying that, like, I will help people and I'm happy to help anybody that, especially people that I actually know. But it's just like, it's funny because I don't know. And you just got to do it. And like something else that you said that I was like, oh, yes, is like that, that stagnancy that a lot of people, I think, just feel in life in general. And it's like, oh, we could go day, day, we could go deep today with this because I like the mental health kick that we're on. And I know we're like on the same page with a lot of that stuff. It's just like people are so comfortable in their complacency that they don't even realize it until they're like, they have the space to like, you know, and I get it, life's crazy. The space to slow down and like, wow, I really didn't do shit with my life. Or like, I've been unhappy for years. And it's just like, it's so unfortunate because the journey, this like this bit here between like where I started and where I'm at now, this is the fun part. 
you know, like that learning process, that confidence that's come with it, that working towards something greater. That is what makes life worthwhile. It's not the end result. It's the whole journey, all the pieces, like every experience in between, the failures, the losses, like the times where you wanted to quit, but you picked yourself up and you did the hard thing and you kept going. Like that's what builds you up as a person and what makes all of this worth it, makes your life worth it. So when you get to the end of your life, you don't feel like a piece of shit for just like accepting it and just getting smacked in the face with things and just being like, this sucks. Like, this is my life. No, you didn't do anything. You didn't try. You know, and a lot of people will say, like, oh, I tried. But if you're really real with yourself, like, did you, though? Like, did you eat, sleep, and breathe this? Like, how bad did you want it? And like, what were you willing to do? What sacrifices were you willing to make? You yeah. know, like, um, there's a lot of pieces to it. And, like, you know, entrepreneurship isn't for everybody because there is a level of mindset and tenacity that, like, you have to have or develop if you want to be wildly successful with this, you know, and then you have to keep going and keep building and keep growing. And like, it's a never ending process, but I'm excited about that. I'm not trying to stop anytime soon. I'm always thinking of new streams of passive income, new like little things I can add here and there. And like, it's so exciting for me. And I've fallen in love with the whole process. Like I love making videos now. I love writing emails. I love my group. I love my followers. Like I love the brand that I built. I love my business partner. Shout out to my friend. Uh, I love everyone I've met in this community. I love you guys. Like it's just, it's such a, uh, I don't know. It's crazy. It's super crazy to see my video last night from my first wake up legendary to see where I'm at today. So I was seven months pregnant in that video. And I'm like, wow, different person today, dude. It's wild. Yeah. Wow. And you continue to grow. Even as you become successful, you really, you really continue to grow. You're, I don't know about you, but I feel like a new person every three to six months because of the amount of, you know, growth. And it really boils down to, I think growth is, it can be simplified down to, because what is, okay, if personal development is not posting memes on social media in a, in a kind of like, in a kind of rebellious way, you know, or in a like a defiant way, or in an immature kind of lack fear based way, um, what is it? If, if 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 personal development is not going to a seminar and getting all pumped up for the weekend and then going home and going right back into what is it? Right? If 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 personal development is not listening to audio books, Dave, what what is it? Because I'm I've you know here for years I've been listening to audio books and reading business books and you know. Friends, that ain't nothing but taking stuff in. That ain't nothing but consuming information. And the problem, in I think, where confusion happens between personal development or learning and actual personal development and growth is that learning is, you can be learning in broke. I mean, I know a lot of people who are lifetime college students. I had a lady with a doctorate come and apply to be an executive assistant for me one time, and I said, ma'am, I respect you, but you're over-educated and under-experienced. And I know you, th and I didn't say this rudely, but I, in a way I said, I know you are surprised by that answer, but what that tells me is, is that you are not able or comfortable taking risk and putting yourself out there and actually, right? Because you've just been in, in school for the past 20 years. And, um, that was just an example that I often think about when I think about somebody, the safety of learning and the safety. We get so excited. And that's where I think shiny object comes from a lot on the Internet is we go from one guru to the next. And, and right when it comes time to do something uncomfortable, we go back to the next guru or the next course. And that is the very difference between learning and taking in information and consuming and actual growth in personal development is the moment where you decide to do what scares you. The moment that you decide to do and follow through with what is uncomfortable. And I'm going to tell you, whether it's posting the video initially or it's posting the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, tenth, twentieth video when the first one and all of them before didn't get any views, whether it's that, whether it's going to therapy and actually getting vulnerable and talking about what's going on with you, that's uncomfortable, right? That's uncomfortable. I mean, 
I can tell you it's on, but it gets easier. And the beautiful thing is, is that the growth happens when that thing that was once really scary and hard is now enjoyable, which you just mentioned. I love my life. I love Becca. I love our group. I love my business. You were deathly afraid of all this though. Remember, yeah. you know, Be yeah. and now there's new things that you're afraid of, right? There's new mountains that you're climbing now. And, yeah. and whether that's, you know, adjusting marketing for longevity, whether that's learning how to do certain things from mentor coaching perspective, whether that's getting better at speaking on stage as, as you're doing, right? It's like there's new challenges in the things that were once so very scary and awkward and uncomfortable aren't anymore, right? Yeah. I mean, and the, the coolest thing about that is, when I used to look at a challenge, I would feel that like fear, but now it's excitement because it's a challenge. It's something to work on. Like I always want to be working on myself always, always, always. And I think that this is like a, you know, a brain thing. Like we make associations with things. Like if something we perceive as scary or we had, a, we've had an experience with something and our memory of that is fear, we're going to link those two together all the time. So if, you can start to change that uh, pathway. It's like a literal neural pathway in your brain between whatever this object is, this experience, this fear that you have and change your entire mindset around it. It becomes not scary. It's it, you're changing that neural pathway in your brain. And then when you do the hard thing and you see that you can do the hard thing and you come out of it and you're like, Oh my gosh, like I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm unscathed. Like that was a little uncomfortable, but I did it you're much more inclined to do the next hard thing because you created that neural pathway in your brain to say like, I can do that. Right. So then you start to take on this persona of like, okay, yeah, hit me with it. Like what's next, what's next. And you start to see things as a challenge, but now history says I can do it. Right. When before it was your own shit saying like, no way, no way can you do that. But when you start doing the work, like you're saying, like not reading about it, not thinking about it, not talking about it. When you physically start doing the work and you have your little wins, it gets easier and easier and easier to do those things. Right. And then you start to build on that. OK, well, if I could do this, I could do this. If I could do this, I could do this. And then you just build this confidence and you're building your business, too. Like there's a bunch of different avenues. If you know this were to stop today, I would be like, OK, hey, what's next? Like I have the knowledge now, I have the skills, I have that high income skill that no one can ever take away from me. And I have this confidence, I have this new me. I can take that and run with it in any which way that I want. And I can say that confidently because I'm here, I did this. I had no experience in this and I can take this and go wherever I wanna go with it. So there's a lot of pieces to this, but you have to be hungry for that change because complacency kills, like you cannot stay stagnant in your life you know if you're happy and like you're you're thriving you're doing really well then like that's great and if there's right. something that, right, right like cool i'm happy yeah. that's the goal but if they're if you're not and there's something that you want to work on or like you know you want to level up as a person you want to become this or become that like don't talk about it think about it like get out there and do it like what's step one you know what i mean like and it, it doesn't have to be in this big monumental thing and i think people do that but like dave if you saw my freaking notebook when i went through the challenge it's full like i was taking down notes and then it was like okay i gotta set up step one go to godaddy literally and then i'm like oh i did it i went to go to get a domain name oh, i got two things checked off my list and it felt bigger and like i was accomplishing more by checking off these little things as i went so you yeah. can't look at the big picture you know like oh i'm sitting here depressed and broke as hell and i look at caroline and that feels huge but when you look at the steps that we're taking in between it still is big but like if you can get to that next step that's all that matters just one foot in front of the other because you don't know how the path is going to turn all you can focus on is that next step and what can i do to be better than i was yesterday and that's yeah. what this is it's a personal development journey as much as it is an entre entrepreneurial journey like it's crazy yeah it's and you, you're hitting the nail on the head in terms of who you are now, which you always were, as you said in the beginning. And I want to echo that once again, that friends, you are, 
Caroline, me, we don't want to be your gurus. I've, I know Caroline, I've met her. She doesn't, she doesn't want it. She want, and you said this at the beginning of the interview, you tend to shit on yourself to make other people feel like you're not bigger or better than them, right? Like that self-deprecating humor. I do it too. We don't want to be your gurus. We also are not here to say that everybody needs this or needs to do this. I love what you said. If you're happy, Great. I mean, maybe you just stumbled upon this live today because you were on Facebook and, you know, you're like, hey, who are these people? I think I'll sit in for this for a moment because I'm really happy in life, but I'll just awesome. Great. Everybody doesn't need this. Everybody shouldn't do this. If you are somewhat happy or OK being complacent, if you tend to start things and not follow through with them, if you're not going to do anything with it, if you always let kind of your fears or what other people think of you stop you, and that's not a judgment on my part. I mean, you can spin that however you want. What other people think of me is important. That's okay. We're not here to judge. But if that's who you are, what you're going to do when you have no desire to change, starting this is only going to create more guilt and shame. Why do that? Why do that to yourself? But if you don't want to worry about what other you're sick and tired of letting other people's opinions slow you down. And I did say keyword letting because people are still going to have opinions. But if you want change, if the complacency is killing you, if you feel like life's slipping away, if you want a different career, if you want to pursue entrepreneurship, being your own boss. If you do feel like no matter where you go, the work environment becomes toxic. If you don't have any time with your kids or your husband or your wife at home or for yourself or nothing to show for all the years of work that you've done and you want to try something different in digital marketing sounds good to you. Sounds like it, that, you know, you may be able to do this with some, some, some support, some guidance, a community by all means give it a try. And you're going to bump up against all your limiting beliefs. You're going to bump up against all the things, the things from childhood, the, the beliefs that you have that in what you'll find if you really listen closely is a lot of those voices are somebody else's. A lot of those beliefs are somebody else's. They're not even yours, right? So this can also be not only a journey of finances and transforming your finances and transforming your time management and your time freedom. But it can also be for me, it has been a very therapeutic journey because I have realized that, well, gee whiz, I, I have a whole different set of beliefs than I thought I did. Or I, I think about the world and money or about people they call totally different than some of my family does. I've began to develop my own beliefs, get rid of, give back the limiting beliefs to the people who I, I, I had adopted them from. Give them back. Hey, these are not mine. I don't want them anymore. They're not serving me. They're not useful to me anymore in my life. Oh, what Caroline's saying does resonate. If I want something, I need to become obsessed about it. I need to get into therapy or get uncomfortable or pursue something regardless of what's going on in my life because we all have hard things, right? We all have tough things that we're going through. My things, some of us are such on the pity pot and have a victim mentality that we have it harder than any everybody else. When the truth is, is friends, we all have our own problems. We all have the things that we're going through in our personal life and we all get that same choice, right? So this is a, a journey. I This is interesting how it's taken this, but it always, I think, does with us because we are, you know, friends, I'm, in, I'm not a substance abuse counselor and have the history of writing a thesis, and, but dadgummit, I'm an, a recovering addict of 15 years. So I've been on the receiving side of a lot of transformation. You just happen to be in that business and understand its power. So did it on your own without tons of consequences. I had consequences as an addict and as somebody who was trying to get clean and sober and now have been for 15 years, 
My superpower is not my marketing skills. My superpower is not my copywriting skills. My superpower is not my video editing skills. That's the mechanics. That's the tip of the iceberg that everybody thinks is the most important part of this business. It's all this stuff that we've been talking about, which is the, the bottom part of the iceberg that nobody sees that I call the dynamics. And one thing that came up for me when you were talking about this confidence piece and how you are a totally new person is, is that if everybody would view the setting up the GoDaddy and those little steps that you were taking as each step is a step towards confidence building. It's like every step is like a step that you take as you walk up the stairs of building your confidence. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I think if everyone looked at it like that and like took those as small wins it would be so much easier to carry on in this process. Like there was so many times where I would be near to tears, like getting everything set up with like, you know, toddler at the time, you know, screaming. And I'm just like, I just want to sleep. I'm pregnant. Like I wanted to give up so many times, but I can remember distinctly when I did connect everything. Like when I was, you know, cause it's, a, it's multiple pieces, right. And getting like your technical side set up and I'm really not tech savvy like that. So like, I would be like trying to figure it out and then, um, you know, I'd mess up something that I just did or like, I didn't save it. And I was literally like, Oh, like, Oh, I'm ready to rip my hair out. Like I'm done with this. And there would be days where I would slam my computer down and be like, I'm looking at it again tomorrow, but I kept showing up and I kept coming back. And the moments I can remember them distinctly when I did get it or I figured something out. It was like, ah! I'd be like, babe, I just did it. And he's like, what? And I'm like, don't worry about it. But like, I was excited because I was like, I figured it out. And it's, it's, it's not even like you have to check off all the things to get that like endorphin rush at the end of like confidence. It happens with each step if you allow it to, mm. you know, like if you celebrate those small wins and like give yourself a pat on the back and keep going and talk to yourself more nicely and say good job, it becomes easier to do the next step. Cause you see, yeah. you did all the other ones, right? You can't look at it like such a big picture. It's too overwhelming. The gratification is not as delayed as we think, right? No. Yeah. If you have that mindset, it's a. <sighs> I think we think that the big piece of cheese is the million dollars or whatever. When there's so many little enjoyable scrumptious little nibbles along the way of confidence building and dopamine and what we're searching for when we're kind of scrolling through social media or like fantasize um, escaping into like a Netflix series or something like we're looking for a payoff, you know, we're looking for happiness. And the truth is, is that it's like an endless, it's like a black hole. We never really find it. We always get off social media after a good 30 to 60 minute deep hole scroll session feeling like, God damn it, man, man, I need a nap or, you know, I feel horrible about myself because, you know, or we just got, you know, we pull ourselves out of a black hole and we're like, what the, where the hell did the time go? Shit, I got to get ready. Right. When it's like, the opposite of that would be, okay, what do I need to do with my business? Uh, set up my domain and go daddy. Then we go do that. And it's like, yeah, the feeling of that accomplishment is true fulfillment. It is. And I know that that's why we get addicted to drugs is because we don't know, as you said, how to appreciate and celebrate those small wins. So oftentimes we look for the big hits. Mm -hmm. We look for the million dollars. I want to be able to quit my job. I want to be able to get so high and feel so good. And I want it all the time. But that's not how life works. You know, there's, there's brilliance in those small moments that you're talking about. And when we can learn to appreciate them and realize that that achievement creates a rush of endorphins and adrenaline and dopamine and serotonin and all these wonderful feelings within us, all the drugs you'll ever need, I realize this, are right within your own body. And you release them when you do things that make you feel good about yourself or when you experience love and connection with others and community. All yeah. the drugs, all the high that you actually ever need to be happy and totally fulfilled the way that God intended us to be, right? 
just alone, without any external substances, are all within us. We have to get good at releasing those. You can view yourself like a, like a keg, you know, do you know how to pour a glass of happiness? You know, do you know how to pour a glass of dopamine? You know, and most of us are kind of pouring it the wrong way, searching for it through things that don't give us fulfillment, uh, but instead make us feel empty and kind of guilty and shameful. And so again, if you're happy with those ways of living, then great. But if you're wanting more, then we have to shift our behaviors. And going back to your neural pathways comment, which you're totally qualified to talk about this, I'm not as a high school dropout. So I'm glad that you brought it up. But one thing I have learned is that those neural pathways don't get changed from thinking about it. Because if they did, then we would all be multimillionaires and we would all be our best versions of ourselves just from saying, there's a Lamborghini in my driveway, or I'm a great public speaker, or I'm you know famous on Facebook, but it doesn't happen like that. Our actions come first and help us. We act ourselves into a new way of thinking. The way that we change our neural pathways is by behaving different, and it doesn't change the first day. It changes over time to where one day, just like drug addiction, you get up after 30, 60, 90, six months, even 12 months clean. And you didn't think about getting high that day. And you're like, that's different. I've been going to meetings, right? I've been helping others. I've been doing all these things, taking all these actions, working a recovery program. And lo and behold, I made it through the whole day and I didn't think about hurting myself or getting high. And that's a great example. That's a great analogy of a neural pathway changing. And I think you've experienced that through this process to where so much time, can I do this? I can't do this. Should I take that down? Who's going to listen to me? Just like the rest of us. And then one day you woke up and you were like, I'm good at this. I can't wait to make a video today. Right. And it's like that pathway must have changed. Yeah. Yeah, it's like you're saying, like, but you didn't wake up 12 months clean and just like, oh, just 12 months from the date without actually putting in the work, yeah. you know, so like that is like that, the piece of it doesn't just happen overnight. But I do think that there's a um, a mental, it, it's physical work, you know, putting in the work, taking the steps, but it's, it's your body and your brain working in tandem to be sure. able to take the step and do the thing. Um, sure. And something else that I... I practice is like visualizing and like I know like a lot of successful people do this a lot of successful athletes do this they visualize themselves doing the hard thing before they actually go and do it so when the time comes for them to actually do it they've already practiced it in their mind over and over and over again so um if you're struggling with like um you know executive dysfunction and like you like need to put your foot down and do something you visualization is a big thing. And I only recently just started talking about like, I have like raging ADHD. So I have to write things down. I have lists everywhere to mm. keep myself on track because I'll just freaking go, you know, and then I'll get like fixed on one thing. Um, so I have like things in place to make sure that I'm staying on task. I'll use timers, uh, set yeah. alarms or whatever. And like, it's, it's getting better now, but um, that's a whole other like thing that, you know, I struggle with. But if you are someone that struggles in that way, I think visualizing is really, really, really helpful. But getting clear about exactly what you want, um, not just like thinking about it vaguely, it needs to be detailed. It needs to be, you know, each step, like, for example, I was just doing this whole thing for waking up at 5 a.m. for two weeks. So when I would get in bed, I'd be like, okay, so how's it going to go tomorrow? I'm doing this all in my head. I'm thinking like, okay, my alarm's gonna go off. I'm not gonna wanna get up, but I'm gonna get up anyway. I'm gonna be really tired. I'm gonna wanna go back to sleep, but I'm not gonna go back to sleep. I'm gonna swing my legs over the side of the bed. I'm gonna feel the cold floor. I'm gonna grab my phone and I'm gonna walk immediately to the bathroom. I already have my gym clothes laid out. I'm gonna pick up my shirt, like literally like every single step. I'm gonna brush my teeth and I'm gonna get in the car and go to the, so by the time the morning came, it was like, I was just like, rehearsing again. I already had done this last night, you know, and this is especially important for those 
bigger things that are really, really difficult that have multiple steps, like setting up a business, you know, and staying consistent with that business. So, so I think there's a, a big play between like the steps up here and the steps on the ground, like the, that you're yeah. actually physically taking. And when you can have them join forces like that, you're going to be unstoppable, you know, but you have to, you have to do both. Um, obviously like the physical steps more important than the mental, but if you do struggle with that part of it, like I did and that I do a lot of the time, um, that piece of it can really, really help. I love that. How are you doing on time? I got one or two more questions. No, yeah, you're okay. I got, okay. I got the moms here. Baby the moms are here. Let's <laughs> hear it for the moms. Okay. So this is beautiful. I think we could go another hour on just that mm -hmm. stuff, but we have done a masterclass here. You have provided incredible information and just value and inspiration on the mindset piece. Let's talk about the business strategy just for a few minutes. You know, a lot of people get this idea that, you know, and, and it's a true misunderstanding of the core four of how wide and deep this business model is and can be and how far these skill sets can take you. As you just said, if all this went away tomorrow, but you still had everything in your brain, you could build a business from scratch and know exactly where to go, probably in multiple niches because the same strategies apply in every niche. But I want to talk to you for everybody's benefit about how did you choose a niche and also with the caveat that everybody or i think a lot of people have this again the misconception is that i have to choose the online marketing or affiliate marketing or make money online space or niche and somehow some way we here at legendary are training people to only promote our products here when in reality you know, for example, in our 15 day challenge, we never mention our affiliate program. We just have happen to have an affiliate program that is a completely different separate sign up process that somebody can do, even if they never go through our courses. So talk to us a little bit about, and also before I ask, you have sort of, you have sort of created the core four business models, the way that we teach them in the way that they kind of should be rolled out first if you have no experience starting selling other people's products right so you don't have to do all the service and custom the delivery and the customer service and all this and then you have enough confidence and knowledge to be able to build your own digital course or start your own community or coaching program or even do events which you've been doing events with us um so talk to us about what your what your you know your journey has been like in terms of choosing the niche that you're going to work in. Why? Why did you choose to to do that niche? And how have you evolved in terms of applying some of the other core four business models of selling information which we teach here? Um so when I first took the course. I obviously probably like everyone does had like, Oh, what I do? I, I can do all this and this and this. And my brain was very like scattered. Um, I would think I, you would be thinking of mental health and you would be right, thinking right. of substance abuse and you would be, I mean, you're already an expert in those particular fields. Sorry. Right, to right. But and it's, it's, it's not like, yeah. And it's not like I would never pursue that even in the future. I remember when I was writing my thesis and I going through this course in tandem, I, just because like the best thing about this course is like that it opens your mind to possibilities. I was like, I could create like an app, uh, like a mental health one, not like a, you know, a headspace or whatever, but like something a little bit different. And I was like, I could do this. I could do that. And I started just like coming up with all of these ideas and I wouldn't necessarily like consider myself to be like someone who's always wanted to be like an entrepreneur. Like I can remember, um, going door to door selling things with my little like radio flyer red wagon when I was probably like, I don't know, like eight, um, trying to raise money for um, one of my good friends. He has uh, epidermal lysis bullosa and it's like a incurable thing. And I was trying to raise money for, for this. And, um, and I would like sell like little crafts. I would make these little like crochet, like, uh, 
bracelet thingies and scarves that were literally like this thick in Florida um, on my stage at, at in the cafeteria in like fourth grade. So I've had like little like moments of like doing things that were, you know, kind of entrepreneurship, but I've never really executed on it. Um, and then once I went through the course, and I'm kind of like, I'm not sounding super eloquent here because I'm kind of having this realization as I'm saying it. Cause I'm like, mm -hmm. why did I, why did I choose this niche? You know? Um, but I think, I think Dave, this is crazy. I think that going through the course and literally being like the, the seed was planted. Like I felt so alive going through that course. Like I swear I, think that having that seed planted and then going through everything feeling that sense of um i don't know the sorry i'm trying i have so many uh thoughts popping in right now i'm just right realizing right live in front of all you guys i'm sorry Love my it. brain is like misfiring i think the excitement of having all these ideas of like, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. Having my mind opened up to the possibilities made me almost switch my mindset to like, I wanna pursue, pursue something entrepreneurship wise and I wanna tell everybody about this. I wanna tell everybody about this course, how, what it did for me, how it opened my mind. You can do this, you can make digital products, you can sell stuff on Etsy, you can make you know shirts on Printify. Like you can do this, this, this and this because once you start, like emerging yourself, like in immersing yourself into this making money online culture and start seeing all these different avenues. It's very exciting. Or at least it was for me. So I was kind of like, it was like, I described it to my friend once. Like, remember the first time you had like a pumpkin spice latte? That's like the whitest thing about me. I love a pumpkin spice latte, but like, you're going to tell your mom, you're going to tell your best friend, you're going to like blast it on social media. If you're that kind of person, like you have to try this, like it's addicting. It's so great. Like everyone needs to buy one. So I'm kind of like, that's how I feel about this course. Mm -hmm. Like it's like, it has been life changing in so many ways. And I think like, that's where I found the most excitement because I did, I uh, started in the, I guess like the outdoors niche um mm. long story with that but my husband has a flamethrower and mm. um i this is like you know when i'm first starting this course and i'm like oh like, when are they have an affiliate program so he reaches out to his friend's uh dad who he got it from and they do and so i'm like oh my God, it's everywhere so then i applied to be an affiliate with them and everything and went through this whole process and so i had like an affiliate link for exothermic technologies flamethrowers and then i'm like Okay, like I got a, I have my first affiliate link, and I was like, "Well, I'm not interested in freaking flamethrowers." I'm like, "How am I gonna make content with flamethrowers?" My husband, he's like, "We can find some like wasp nest." I'm like, "Yeah, like well, <laughs> I'm supposed to be posting like three times a day. We're just be like shooting freaking random wasp nests, and then at one point, like doing like the dog poop in the yard." And I was just like, "I feel like I'm better than this." So then, <laughs> I was looking into. Um, health and fitness stuff uh i have like an affiliate link for like a cold plunge because that's something that we do um but i kept coming back to the course so i'm like this has me fired up like why don't i just like promote this um and then kind of see where it takes me so then that was kind of like the journey with that and then like it's just like a snowball effect because if you're thinking like what else can i promote in this niche it's like well, what did you use like in your business like starting up like you want an llc like you want a business line of credit um, you need to grow your social media following, like all these different things that like you can become affiliates for if you, you know, take what you were taught and search it and then go apply for these things. So um, I just kind of started building as I went. And now I have 13, about to be 14 different things that I'm an affiliate for in mm. this niche on top of, yeah, my own digital products and mentorship group. And uh, we have a new exciting thing coming out in the near future. And um yeah, like, like just like you're saying, like those core four that you guys teach where in the beginning, I didn't really see like why that was necessary for me at that point. I had this moment months ago where I was just like, oh, like that's why we needed it because I'm literally doing all of it now. You know, yeah. like the coaching, the digital products, um, masterminds. I mean, 
it's all kind of like it all entrenching. If you, if you get to that point, if you want it to be that, you know, and you get yeah. to a point like me where you're super passionate here and you know, you love what you do and now you're, you're taking it and you're really running with it and making it like your, you know, your business and your life. And it's just, it's, it's crazy. It's so yeah. Crazy. That was su such a good, that was so good. That was so um, clear <laughs> about how, even though it felt maybe a little bit, um, unclear coming out as you were sort of processing there. Um, and that's, that's beautiful. I mean, great questions create great answers, you know, and, uh, that was, that was an amazing explanation and visualization of kind of what your journey has been like. And this has been, you know, one of my favorite conversations to come back and, you know, I see you a lot, you know, probably more than anybody in this community because we, you've been to a lot of our events. Um, but, you know, it's been a while since we've sat down and to really hear your uh, journey like this um, and uh, for everybody to have, you know, to have it recorded so people can go back and listen to it um, is just, um, it's just legendary. It's just beautiful. It's just awesome. I'm so happy for you. I really am. I'm so happy for you. You're so deserving of this. Um, you, you are so relatable. Some of the comments here, I mean, there's been so many comments flooding this conversation and th I want to thank everybody for your beautiful comments. You're so, you know, so relatable. She's so awesome. She's my inspiration. She's, you know, what got me started. All those comments have been flooding the whole hour and 14 minutes. And so, um, yeah, any other love that you want to drop in here for Caroline before we end would be um, now would be the time to do it. And, if, and again, you all make this show what it is because of the feedback and the appreciation and the validation that you all give us. It means so much because we know that you get what we're doing here, you know, and as much as, you know, we all fantasized about all of our friends and family being so proud of us and understanding what we're doing. It, it's not reality, right? But you are our people. You are the tribe, the family that we never knew that we needed, right? Of like-minded people from all around the world who get this, who get us, right? Who get the, the, this desire to have more, to do more, to, to try to build a business, to, you know, pursue our dreams, to um, help others, serve others and make a, an income while making that impact. Like you all get it. And so thank you so much for all of your amazing comments. And, um, you know, we're here to, to, um, to serve you all, to inspire you. And at the same time, you're serving us and inspiring us by giving us all this amazing feedback and energy back. So Caroline, hey, let's do it again in the near future. Go. Yeah. Take it all in. All the feels, all the chills. Um you know, and um, thank you so much for another amazing segment. Every time we do something with you, it's just top tier. It's the best of the best. And I can't wait to keep the keep it going. So stay legendary, my dear friend. Uh, and thanks for your time. Today. I'll okay. see you soon. I will. See you. Yeah. All I'll right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the comments. Yeah. Let's over here. I didn't even know they were there. <laughs> I just clicked over them. Oh, thank you, guys. All right, my friend. We'll talk, take it all in. All right. You deserve it. Thank you. All right. See you later. Bye. All right, my friends, you can follow Caroline over on Instagram at the underscore mompreneur underscore. Okay. At the underscore mom -trepreneur. Okay. I'll spell that out for you. So in case you're listening to it at the T H E underscore Mompreneur, M-O-M-T-R-E-P-R-E-N-E-U-R -E 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 underscore at the end. All right, my friends, it's been an absolutely pleasure. It's been an honor. It's been so much fun to be with you this morning. Um, for an, I mean, just what a great way to kick off the week. Let's go. All right, my friends, nothing more to say if you want to get started with our challenge. Get into our blueprints. Come to a mastermind. You can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. That's spelled E-N-R-O-L-L. Legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll.
get started, get rolling. Put yourself up for a challenge. Do something that's uncomfortable for you. Now, if you're here, you're just kind of chilling, kind of listening in. Hey, hopefully you got value. Hopefully you got some entertainment. Hopefully you got some inspiration. But if you want to take some action, get some education, know how to put the pieces of the puzzle in place to actually get some results, then go take our challenge. We'll show you everything. We'll show you through various forms of videos and courses. And if you are really excited, you want more accountability, you want more step-by-step -step instructions, you want more daily coaching, then get started with our affiliate marketing business blueprint or any of our blueprints. Or if you go through our challenge, you can get a special offer as you go through our challenge. Just start if you're new here by going through the challenge. Learn, get a taste, have an appetizer. And if you want to stay for the meal, then get involved in our blueprints. If you want to you know, take things to the next level, your education, accountability, your coaching. That's what that's there for. If you want to come to a mastermind to hear Caroline speak, as well as many other marketers, myself, teach, learn, share, laugh, cry, all the things, break bread for an entire weekend, come to a mastermind. Okay. We have it here to meet you wherever you're at, wherever you're at, no matter what you're wanting and willing to do, we're here to help you to take that next step until tomorrow. Next time we do it five days a week. And if you want to get a simple little text message reminder, you can text W U L to 813-296-8553. We'll get you a nice little text message reminder coming right up on your phone at 10 a.m. Eastern time every day. Text W U L where you would normally put the text, the, 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 the words put W U L short for wake up legendary and Text that to 813-296-8553. One more time, if you're wondering where to go, how to start, what to do next, go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash enroll. Take some action. Do something. All right, get started or start over. Sometimes we need to start over. Log back in. That education that you bought still there. We don't take it away. Start or start over. But do something for yourself today. You deserve it. You're worth it. Stay legendary, my friends. Get out of here. Have a fantastic day. Peace.